Business Brain, episode 478 for Friday, August 25th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we tune our business brains together by discussing, researching, Digging in on a few topics each week. Sponsors for this episode include FinancingThatWorks.com, where you can save 250 bucks on Zinch's application fee just because you're a business brain listener. We'll share some of the details about that in a minute. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire on Casual Friday, I'm Dave Hamilton. Oh, it's Casual Friday. And the month is almost over. It's amazing how quickly... Uh... Time yeah. flies around here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you out there on the East Coast, but out here it moves really quick. No, it, yeah, it also moves quickly here. It's just just a few hours ahead of you. That's all. That's right. That's right. Hey, I have a I have this concept that I would like to talk about all right. uh, today. I have a couple of them, but the first one I want to discuss is, um, you know, we measure like return on investment on sure. everything, right? Yep. Okay, I'm going to do this, and what do I get out of it? Mm -hmm. Whether and we've talked about it, we talked on the show over and over and over. Um, but I, I want to introduce this concept that I've I've started calling uh, slippery math. Okay, and, and so bear with me for a minute. Okay, and listen, <laughs> tell me if I'm crazy or if you think it you're might crazy. Be because oh wait, yeah, I'm, okay. I I know that. All right, yeah, wait. because I talk about you know with my friends and family, and we talk about on the show like this. Oh, living a pre-tax lifestyle and yeah. living a charmed life. How your business can help you this and that, and. <sighs> I really noticed it. I'm, I'm in the middle of buying an, a piece of property. Okay. And as I penciled out, put everything in a spreadsheet, like I've always done, I was like, wow, you know, this is pretty tight. If we're going to make any money here, you know, we'll make some money, but I was like, ah, it's kind of the ROI. It, it was kind of light. Okay. So I sit down, I talked yeah. to, I talked to, uh, to Renee and everything. And she says, yeah, but we love this place. We're going to go all the time. Oh, and I okay. said, oh, that's, that's a huge ROI, right? That's a right. big benefit, but there's no, it's intangible, you know, there's no number I can attach to it. And then I started thinking, well, this is where I think I could start using some slippery math because there is a big value in the fact that maybe I'm going to go to this piece of property once a month, every six weeks, and we're going to be there. And my kids are going to come visit and family's going to come take my mom well, that's powerful uh, ROI, right? Yeah. And that's a huge part of living a charmed life. So then I started thinking about the concept, and I think I've been kind of doing it my whole life in the sense of, okay, we need some vehicles for the business, let's say. Well, yeah, you could go buy the, you know, the most inexpensive and practical vehicle, but, you know, you kind of want to have a nice vehicle. You're, you're, taking lots of risk with your business in the beginning, you're working long hours and at night, wouldn't it be nice to have a better car, a better truck? And yeah, the ROI, can you justify that? Well, the IRS says you can, especially if it's, you know, you need something to yeah. do your certain business. That's slippery math. And this, I think this concept is uh, important to embrace, at least for me, I can only speak for myself. Of course. That, that it, I, cause I often beat myself up thinking, man, I, I didn't do great on that deal, but you know, there's some other, uh, other benefit that you have to plug into this. And, uh, so I'm, that's what I'm called. You think I'm, you think that's a, a good idea or you think you're going down a slippery slope? To <laughs> <losing> money? <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely played. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I no, I like this idea. I mean, even if it fails spectacularly, You've learned, you're like you have the opportunity to learn something, and hopefully you did, right? Yes. Like, like we always say, yeah. mistakes are our tuition. That's how we justify paying for them. Now, unlike college tuition, or perhaps exactly like we should approach college tuition, we don't necessarily know in business the lessons we're going to learn and the price we're going to pay from our mistakes, right? Like, yes. you, you know, yes. walking into it, it's generally we don't walk into deals saying, well, I'm going to spend a bunch of money and never get it back and I'm going to learn something. Oh, yeah. Right. No. But that is no. literally what happens in college. So yes. I'm just going to point that out. Uh, hopefully, you know what you're going to learn. Maybe. Yeah. But 
it, like even that, like knowing that going in on things like this is helpful, I, I think. But I, yeah, I, like, I think but you don't want to plan. Math. You don't want to no. plan for the mistake, yeah. right? I mean, I, no, like, no, it's not. It's 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 not a mistake. But that's what I'm saying. It's, is this isn't a yeah. mistake, right? No, yeah. I think this it's is just good. Even with college, college is slippery math because, like, my daughter made so many contacts. And when we went, even on the tour, when she was going to the school of Manhattan, they said, oh, well, we, the, the city is, is part of, uh, what you're going to learn Yeah, the campus, the entire city, yeah, yeah, all yeah. these connections on Broadway, we're going to introduce you all these kinds of things. And I said, well, how do you, how do you put the value on that boy? That's, that's some slippery math. That, like, yeah, it's slippery it's math. Hard. No. Yeah. And there, there, yeah, I think this is good. I think it is a slippery slope though. I, like yeah. we we Can't need to much. we need to not put slippery math at the top of the priority no. list for every single deal that we decide to do, right? Yeah, you'll because be out of business. You'll be out of business, right? Like yeah. so be smart about this, but know that somewhere, you know, maybe between 4 and 20 on the list should be slippery math, right? Like there's got to be some and and slippery math is also in a sense the leap of faith, like I, my gut says I know to do this. I can convince myself sort of on paper, right? Like, and and yeah. you have in your the deal you described. So I can convince myself sort of on paper. There's gonna be a little bit of this that I don't know about, but yeah. I can already see some of the things that I can't assign, I can't attribute dollars to, but they right. are worthwhile for me. Yes, and that's for the you. Key. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And and so I think you could use it in er, different areas of your business. And it, it's just something that that uh, I think you could turn it into a, a positive when it's applicable. Yeah. Right? When it's uh, yeah. because I like with this property we're buying, I don't want to look back and say, because I think, you know, we probably paid. I, I definitely know I paid too or not too much, but more than I wanted to. Okay. But yeah, it happens. But, right. It happens. I, I pay, I, you know, I, I didn't pay him what they wanted, but I, I paid a little bit more than what I would like to have. Yep. So to me, knowing going into this thing where I'm going to learn a lot, I, I know it. Um, it. I can look back and say, oh, you know what? It didn't appreciate that much or this kind of thing, but it was okay because I knew there was slippery math going into this. All right, look, if you own a small business, you know that unexpected costs can arise at any time. But Zinch understands that the unexpected is an expected part of running a business. So why wait around for a sudden impact to your business? Check out our sponsor, Zinch, today to see how you can become prepared and stay prepared. And this is because Zinch is a direct lender tailored to small and medium-sized businesses like us. Zinch makes loans simple fast and flexible and can approve up to $250,000 in under two days. When you partner with Zinch, you won't have to wait months for a traditional bank loan. Whether you're dealing with things like big bills that you didn't expect, a second computer that died in two weeks, or the costs that come from expanding your workforce, Zinch can help you with what you need when you need it. Their specialists work with you and help you choose the best solutions for your needs. And there are no commissions or third-party approvals, right? So Zinch can give you better rates, faster approvals, and keep your info secure. Don't wait for an emergency. Apply today with Zinch. For a limited time, Zinch is waiving application fees for you because you're a business brain listener. That's a $250 value for minutes of your time. So just go straight to the special URL that we have, financingthatworks.com. Again, that's financingthatworks.com. Loans made or arranged pursuant to a California finance lender's law license. And our thanks to Zinch for sponsoring this episode. It's really important to just be focused and not distracted <laughs> and I, like also i am a master at avoiding procrastination yes. shannon but how do You're you feel me about on my focus? next topic i'm trying to yeah 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 we we talked about this on the show a lot and you know focusing on this and that and the other and and, and uh, as you look around business books all on focus and this and don't get distracted and 
you know, looking back, and, and maybe I'm doing that more and more now, looking back on my life, I'm terrible at focus. Same. But I'm great at a wide bandwidth and embracing different opportunities. That's my, my superpower. Yeah. So I think for me, I, I, th there's a thing, you know, I, I'm calling it the focus trap. You know, I love these buzzwords. But because I think you can fall into this trap where you're so focused that you miss opportunities that are coming along on the peripheral, right? Is that, is uh, okay. That, I mean, All right. I, I'm okay. I'll, I'll buy this. I'm, I'm, this I'm is, in a little bit here. Yeah. Like, I, like I, I, as someone, you know, I, a friend of mine, when I was in like maybe college, probably high school said to me, you know, Dave, it's all about learning how to live with yourself. And, and he is correct. Like we're all at least a little yeah. bit different. Some of us vastly different. I Very, have yeah. learned that I am someone who I was never diagnosed with ADHD, but like I certainly resemble a lot of those remarks. Right. So yes, I know that I have to, I had to learn how to live with myself and not just like be at peace with this, but how to capitalize on being a little bit scatterbrained, right? Like, you know, going in different directions, sometimes trying to go in different directions at the same time. So I know that there is value for me in prioritizing focus because there are some times where I need to sit down and do a thing without being distracted how short term short term focus yes yes I short term focus so i like i i have to be careful not to just buy into phrases like the focus trap however <laughs> yeah. right because i know that for me i need to maintain a healthy respect for focus however yes. it's not all the time short term yeah yes. because there are days when my best value to myself and my businesses is just letting myself kind of go with the flow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you my example. All right. We, you know, I've, I've been in the technology business my whole life. Sure. And we had a relationship with a huge, a huge, huge company. And we were buying all their returns, you know, laptops, everything else, uh, you know, portable stuff. And we did a ton of business. And one day, I just was, you know, looking at all the stuff this company was involved in. And I was like, God, they sell all these different products, you know, and uh, we're focused on technology. Well, I kind of already offloaded that. So maybe this is part of the, the discussion is being able, making yourself ready for that distraction that could turn into something positive. Because yes. I'd already delegated that part, right? So sure. it wasn't just me. I really wasn't running that part of the business anymore. So I had more time. And it turned out, uh, I made an offhand comment one day. I was like, man, what else can you guys sell me? And I get a call like three or four weeks later from somebody I'd never met at this you know, huge giant uh, conglomerate. And they said, hey, you know, we have a, I know you handle the technology and you handle all returns for this group and they love you. Uh, I have this problem. I need somebody to help me with uh, watches. And I was like, watches? <laughs> I don't know anything. It, in the back of my head, the first thing was, ah, I don't know. Nah, that's not our business. That's not me. But yeah. It's not me. But I didn't fall into the focus trap. I said, hey, I, sure, why not? Let's. Wh what's this all about? And I flew out. I met this group. I started under, learning about it. And then, you know, I spent time trying to find vendors that I could sell to. And I, I, I decided, okay, let's do this watch stuff. And I partnered with some people and we, and we first, we tried to sell them to consumers and that was a complete and total nightmare and a failure, like a massive failure. But then one day walking through the jewelry and watch district in New York, I went into the, this place and started talking to a guy. It turns out, you know, 20 years later, I've probably done over $25 million worth of business with this one person. Wow. All with watches. I don't wear a watch. I don't know anything about watches, but I understand how deals work and, uh, you know, how to make these things work. If I had been so focused that I'm a tech guy, this is my tech company and never would have gotten into, and maybe I would have gotten some ancillary things. We did try to get in the TV business, another huge mistake. You, you've mentioned uh, that that was a disaster. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll never, yeah. I still own a TV and I always call it, that's my hundred thousand dollar TV right there. Cause that's about what I lost mm. <laughs> on that, that function. So 
that's what I mean by not falling in the focus trap is opening up your bandwidth. And I think there is some real value in understanding that you have to offload some things and delegate in order to have the, uh, oper- the privilege of being accessible to those opportunities. So you can't, you get your head above it and you can go, Oh, yeah. let me, let's, let's try this out. But if you're just buried in it every day, yes, you have to focus, but you should be focusing on getting yourself out of that. So you can go on to the next thing and, and build and create a revenue stack that, you know, is going to build your wealth over time. So that, that's what I mean by that. And if you think I'm crazy, let me know, you know, feedback at businessbrain.show. Tell me what, uh, and I have a great defense of this, uh, this topic that I'm going to be posting on my Twitter account that came from Walt Disney that I, I just found this graphic and I was like, dude, this guy's nuts, but it all came to fruition for him, right? Um, so it, it's an interesting topic and I'd love to talk, you know, hear everybody's opinion about it. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Yeah, no, it's a, this is a good topic because you, there is always a next thing. Right, Malcolm Gladwell right. is is famous for saying, "Don't do the same thing throughout your career. Like, have multiple careers." Yeah, and that's uh, right. And and so you have in order for that to work. And I I agree with him in in a like sort of in a, a you know ten thousand foot view sense. Like, yeah, I, I like you've got to be open to be able to do the next thing to be able to evolve. So yeah, that's right. I don't. I'm still not as old as Ray Kroc was when he started. The business that, that we right? all know him for. I think <laughs> so. Amazing. Right? Yeah, you're probably right. I just watched that movie, Founder, the other uh, yeah, few yeah, weeks yeah. ago. Awesome. How, how old Everybody's was he like when he started McDonald's? It was in his late 50s, I think. Yeah, so, late 50s, yeah. Yeah, so I'm still not in my late 50s. So, you know, the, the best is yet to come, and I've had a lot of good. Like, I'm not, I, you know, uh, I'm not <laughs> sitting here th- saying, man, I got I to gotta hit, you know, I got to hit a big next because no, like, but still like, you you know, there's always something to come. So absolutely, man. Let us know. Like he said, feedback at businessbrain.show. We would love to hear from you. Make sure to check out Zinch at financingthatworks.com. Keep living that charmed life, folks. And we will see you next week.